Welcome to Latino Americans with your host and narrator, Jacqueline Torres. Everything you need to know about Latino history by the author Emil Senovas. She is an expert in Latino history, culture, literature, and human rights. We will start today with some important dates to remember. November 22nd, 1595, Sir Francis Drake, the English mariner, explorer, and privateer, sails into San Juan Bay. December 10, 1898, by the Treaty of Paris ending the Spanish-American War, Puerto Rico is ceded to the United States. April 12, 1900, the United States declares Puerto Rico an unconsolidated U.S. territory under the Foraker Act. March 2, 1917, President Woodrow Wilson signs the Jones Act, granting all Puerto Ricans U.S. citizenship. July 25, 1952, the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico is proclaimed. November 14, 1993, in a non-binding referendum, the people of Puerto Rico vote in favor of preserving Commonwealth status. December 13, 1998, in another referendum on the island's status, the people of Puerto Rico again elect to remain a Commonwealth. April 1999, Angry protests erupt on the island of Vieques after a Puerto Rican security guard is killed by errant bombs during U.S. Navy bombing practice there. January 3, 2001, Sila Maria Calderon is sworn in as governor of Puerto Rico. She is the first woman ever elected to that post. May 2003, the U.S. Navy halts all training operations on the island of Vieques. Who was Field Marshal Alejandro O'Reilly? By the mid-18th century, illegal commerce was thriving in Puerto Rico as Puerto Ricans traded with European buccaneers and privateers behind Spain's back. What's more, the islanders were farming only 5% of the land. As a result, trade between Spain and Puerto Rico came to a virtual standstill. Spain was vexed because Spanish taxes were supporting the island, and yet the Spanish were getting little in return. In 1765, the Spanish king sent Field Marshal Alejandro O'Reilly, a brilliant soldier and civic planner, to Puerto Rico to overhaul the system of government, enhance profitability, and bolster the colony's defenses by establishing an organized militia. Alejandro O'Reilly formulated a plan known as the O'Reilly Report, which is considered one of the most important documents Spain issued to its colonies because for the first time, the colonists' needs, not just the Spanish crown's interests, were recognized. O'Reilly devised a way of legalizing trade between the Spanish colonies and other European nations that was beneficial to Spain. He also laid the groundwork for a system of land distribution in Puerto Rico, whereby new Spanish settlers were given agricultural acres for free if they were willing to farm them. Through O'Reilly's efforts, new schools were opened and new towns were constructed in Puerto Rico, houses built in the Spanish style, with thick stone walls that kept the interiors cool, sprang up from coast to coast. Spain's revived interest in Puerto Rico also served to enrich the island's cultural life. Puerto Rico's first painter and one of its most distinguished, Jose Campeche, who was born in San Juan on January 6, 1751, to an African freed slave from Puerto Rico and a Canary Islander, and who received training from Luis Paret, a court painter banished from Spain, did his work during this progressive era. A growing national identity. How did Puerto Ricans feel about Spanish rule? By the advent of the 19th century, an appreciable proportion of Puerto Rico's citizenry was convinced that it was time to leave, quote, home, Spain, and start a household of their own sovereignty. By then, a cultural and national identity distinct from Spain had arisen in Puerto Rico. In striving for autonomy, Puerto Ricans demanded educational reform, the formation of labor unions, less taxation and more representation, and the appointment of Puerto Ricans, not Spaniards, to local government posts, which at the time were strictly off-limits to all criollos. Thank you for listening to Latino Americans with your host and narrator, Jacqueline Torres.